So that last video I just posted was a big hit. A lot of you guys really enjoyed it. And I got a ton of really positive comments. I also got a few comments that made me think, you know, maybe I need to spend a little bit of time going over some of the finer details here because I get excited and I think of ideas and plans and things that we could do. And then I just kind of blow right through them in these videos and there are a lot of unanswered questions. So I thought I would take some time to just do an update to that video, that previous one. And if you haven't seen it yet, I'll put a link down below and uh, just kind of give you guys some thoughts and ideas on it and some specifics. And then also at the end of this, I want to leave you with something to try and kind of get your mind on the right track. So first of all, everything that I'm talking about here on this channel is very possible. And that's one of the reasons that I do a lot of these plant propagation videos where I do the start and the finish. It's a lot of work to try and have all those segments, but I put them all together in one video so that you can see that it actually does work. It really works and you really can do the same thing. And then we go into other videos where I show you the ins and outs of how we do them and why we do them and the materials we use and all that kind of good stuff. The same is true with these videos like the one I just did last week where we're talking about making money ideas, making money with plants, because that's where a lot of you guys want to take this. How do I start a nursery? How do I start a nursery at home? Well, anybody can do this, and that's where I want to start this. In a second, I'm going to take you out and show you some of the ins and outs and the details about this. However, I want to start with one thing. First of all, 90 8% of the comments on that video were positive and I love inspiring you guys and sometimes inspiring you guys inspires me and then your comments inspire me as well. However, I do occasionally get some negative comments and negative feedback and I want to address that real quick because it, it doesn't hurt me, it hurts the people giving it. Here's why. I know this stuff works. I do this stuff. I've been doing it for years now. My goal is to help you guys. And so when somebody comes on and they say, sure, you can make $500, but it's going to take a month to do. Or somebody else came on and said, first, you have to buy the land. Then you have to buy the bark. Then you have to go find the pots. Then you have to have to have to have to. And they get 10 things down the road and they say, this is completely ludicrous. This can't be done like you're saying. When I get those comments, I think it totally defeats the purpose of that video. That video is to inspire you guys and show you things and ideas that I'm already doing and have done. I'm not making this stuff up, guys. <laughs> and so when I get a comment like that, I feel bad for the person because what those kinds of things do is they show me one that they've got a limited mindset but when people repeat those things out of their own mouth or their own fingers it's reinforcing in their own mind that it won't work they are limiting their own potential and so i just want to draw your attention to that pitfall that trap don't limit your potential. You guys can do anything you want here. I'm going to take you out here in a second and I'm going to show you how you can do this kind of stuff. And, and it can be done in many different ways and on many different scales and with many different plants. This was simply one idea. And that's why this is so beautiful because you could mold it and fit this idea to whatever plant you love working with and you know the things that you can find in your area the products and that kind of stuff so let's start by doing this there was one very specific comment from somebody on here that said you know it's going to take much longer than one hour to make the 500 dollars, and by the time you're done you're only going to make 500 dollars in a month i don't remember exactly how they worded it um, but I want to try and dispel that right now and show you that you don't need property. You don't need a ton of time. You just need a little bit of ingenuity and a work ethic. No, nothing's free. I mean, you're going to have to put in a little bit of time and effort. And it's not going to be a ton of time and effort, though. It's going to be mostly a ton of 
creativity and what you can figure out and think up in your own mind. All right, so here's all those fir trees. So I finally came out. My, my wife and kids finished potting these up when I was at work the last weekend. And I came out and fertilized all these guys and put some uh, pre-emergent down on them. But look at that. Isn't that just a massive amount of fir trees. I can't wait for these things to just explode with growth and do really well. Now, just to address one thing, somebody did say, hey, I think those pots are too small for those trees. And the what I would say to that is, yes, you're absolutely right. <laughs> these pots are too small for these trees. And it was a decision I had to make. These, it's going to work out great for one season because the roots weren't too big for the pots. They were, they fit in the pots just fine and there's plenty of room for root growth to occur. And so I, you know, I considered using bigger pots, like some three gallons, five gallons, but the problem you run into is I'm really just trying to get these guys, you know, worked out here for one season, one growing season. I'm not trying to grow these things in pots and I would actually have to go get all of the bark that it would take to fill those pots over there, which would be more expense, more time. And then when you plant them, you've got to dig a bigger hole. With these, one season's going to do fine. They're going to fill out these pots. The roots will. They'll fill them. By the end of this year, these pots will be packed full of tight roots and these things will be taller and they'll be they will have outgrown these pots in one season you are absolutely right but this is just to get them through one season now just so you, full disclosure here this is like a woodshed area that i have i've got some pots laying over here that i picked up at a guy's house now i'm gonna talk about this just for a second all right so here's the deal this area right here is like i said it's my woodshed it's where i store my tractor uh, you know, and I've got all these pots. It's just a bunch of odds and ends back here under a shed. And so there's nothing fancy about this. There's no professional nursery ambiance going on back here. The reason I'm back here is because that's where I threw these pots after I found them. Now, I get this question a lot. Where do you get all your pots, Mike? I will just say, do not buy new pots unless you just find some good deal on them or you need one or two or five pots. Find them used. Every single pot I've ever used around this place has been used. I, I think, I, I take that back. I think I bought like 10 pots once about 10 years ago. I, other than that, everything has been used around here. And the reason is you can spend like a seven gallon pot. If you buy it new, it's like 15 or 20 bucks or something. I just got like a hundred of them for free from a friend who planted a bunch of Arbor Vitae. He bought them at uh, Costco, planted them, and he was going to throw the pots away. That was one source. I mean, yeah, you go, well, I don't have a friend that's going to plant a bunch of Arbor Vitae, but these are little just ways that you find this stuff. You know, it's not all going to happen perfectly, but you can find all of this stuff at uh, places like, if you go online, like Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace. Um, there was one time I, I found an ad on, I think it was Craigslist, and it was a guy about a 15 minute drive from my place, and he had a ton of pots. I don't know if he was starting a nursery or what, or was going two years earlier, but he had most of the pots I just showed you over there. He had them out in a bunch of brush and weeds. They've been sitting out there for years, covered by brush and weeds. They were scattered all over. Some of them were in big sleeves, all crammed together. Some of them were laying in odds and ends. And he said, you can have as many as you can fit in the back of your pickup truck for $10. I mean, these are the kinds of deals you can find out there. $10 for almost all of those big pots you saw right there. That's where those came from. Another time a guy listed an ad on Craigslist, I think it was up at Fox Island, and my wife and I drove up there. This was years ago, and I paid more for those. I think I paid $100, but I got a, a whole truckload of huge pots. Um, another time a nursery was downsizing, and I found hundreds of one-gallon pots for like $40, and there were some two- and three-gallons thrown in there. So the deals are out there. You just got to look for them and find them. So that solves the pot issue. And I mean the pot, the nursery pots. And uh, so these, uh, these pots over here, any, it doesn't take up much space at all. I mean, it's like a four by four area. 
and even if you just have a house in a neighborhood, you can store them. Now, in line with that, people say, well, you've got all this property, Mike. Well, just to dispel that little myth that you need a lot of property and you got to go buy land for this stuff. The first guy I was telling you about in that last video where I almost spent $900 on 300 plants and bought them for $3 each, he was going to give me a deal because I was going to buy $900 worth. He gave me his address and I looked him up to see where I was going to be driving and you could see he lived in a neighborhood with a house and just a little backyard and a little front yard and he was selling hundreds of trees out of his backyard. And so not enough said about that one. As far as time and energy, you can literally get on Craigslist one night and instead of, you know, watching something on Netflix for a half hour, you can, you can literally, you can sit on your phone while you're watching Netflix get on Craigslist or get on Facebook Marketplace and just look up nursery pots and you can scroll through there and see what's available in your area and new things are coming up all the time. So I'm always looking at this stuff. I'm not just con just looking at it one time and I'm done and then say, well, this isn't going to work. I'm always looking at these ads. And when you come across one, you go like, I see them all the time, guys. There, there, there's a, there'll be some, you know, a lady off in a neighborhood 10 minutes from me or, or a guy over in the next town over 30 minutes from me or something. And, and they'll have a stash of like 100 pots and there'll be two gallons, three gallons, five gallons. And they're like, you know, um, a dollar a piece or take them all for 50 bucks or, you know, and then you just kind of do the math in your head and figure out, you know, what am I paying per pot here? Generally, now the prices are going up, but you know, as time goes by, that's just inflation. But generally, the one gallon pots go for 10 cents, the two gallon for two cents, the three gallon for three cents, and then it starts climbing up from there. But, and I have seen some of the prices, you know, starting to elevate, but for used pots, that's typically what you're going to pay. Even if you had to pay a little bit more than that, it's not the biggest deal. That's like the most minor part of your expense. Just find them used. So that takes no time at all. You scroll through, you find an ad, you you don't even have to call them anymore. You text the person, set up a time. You're not, you really have no time in this. It's just, uh, you know, you're sitting there watching Netflix and then you, uh, you know, when that day comes, you're off, you schedule it for a time, you're off. When you've got free time, you drive over to the person's house, you buy the pots and you bring them home. Boom, there it is. In fact, all of every single one of the one gallon pots that I used over there for those fir trees, the 360 some odd pots, you guys want to know where I found those and how much I paid for them? There was a guy literally two minutes down the road from me. His parents owned a little nursery. It was a little mom and pop nursery, not anything big at all. They would only open when they felt like it. They put a little sign out on the road. The older couple passed away and the son came in and was selling everything off. I drove over there. There wasn't much I was really interested in, but I noticed that he had... Um, a bunch of pots kind of in the brush. They were just laying off like grass had grown up over them. And they were, anyway, I went over to the pile and I was like, wow, these are like brand new pots, which they pretty much were brand spanking new, had never been used, most of them. I think there were like close to 400 of them there. And he, I, I just said, you know, what do you want for the pots? <laughs> he said, I don't know. What do you think they're worth? What, $10? I was like, I'll give you 10 bucks for them. He let me, I, my brother and I went over there. We loaded up all these pots and filled the truck with like 400 more pots. I still have a bunch of them back here for $10. I couldn't even believe it. But this is the kind of stuff that crops up. It was two minutes down the road. It didn't take any time. You can find that stuff around your area. So we got no time invested in that. Now, we need to find some form of a potting soil. So I've talked about this a lot, what I use on here um, or around here. I use finely ground fir bark. I you belabored this many times, got lots of videos about it, but it's just a byproduct of the logging industry in my area. Fir trees are abundant around here. There's lots of fir bark. They grind it up and people use it in landscape beds for mulch. I use the finely ground stuff and it works really well for me, especially for the rhododendrons that I grow, but it works for any plants. Of course, you're gonna have to fertilize. It's inert, this stuff is. But if you're not doing cuttings, these aren't cuttings, these are seedlings and that are already growing, they already have roots. You can use potting soil, you can use any growing medium. In fact, 
if you really wanted to grow them on for another year, you could just till up a little area and plant them right in the soil and then bare root them the following year. So, hey, another idea. But you can use any potting soil for these things. And a lot of places will actually deliver to your house if you find a landscape supply business that has potting soil or finely ground up mulch or anything that will work well as a potting soil they'll deliver they have dump trucks they'll deliver right to your house you can usually go to these places and you can buy the material a yard at a time and they'll load it in your pickup truck there are different ways you can go about doing this so don't stress about that one it might take a little creativity and ingenuity in your area to figure out what works and what i can get but it's all out there there are nurseries around you every town you go to there's nurseries and they're getting their potting soil from somewhere heck maybe you go to a nursery the big nursery around here actually has it delivered in huge dump truck loads. Maybe you can go down to them and say, hey, when you get your load delivered this season, can I buy some from you? And they might say yes and mark it up a little bit, throw a yard of it in the back of your pickup truck, and you're good. So potting soil can be found. That's not a problem at all. Don't get hung up on that one. You are going to need fertilizer. You can go buy big boxes or bags of uh, Osmocote at the big box stores, and the amount of fertilizer you use Per pot is going to be pennies, just like the potting soil. If you're trying to parse it all out and figure out what your profit is, it's not that big of a deal. Yeah, you're going to pay 10, 15 bucks for a good slow release fertilizer, but it's going to go a long way. And when you're selling the plants, it's, it's pennies when you're, you know, per pot. We've already talked about the space. You don't need 10 acres. You don't need a lot of land. You can do this stuff in a neighborhood. You can do this stuff anywhere, really. Now, when it comes to the type of plants, you're going to find different plants in your area than I've got here. I've got Douglas fir trees. If you live in the Pacific Northwest, they're plentiful. If you live in Missouri, maybe not so plentiful, but maybe people are buying pine trees. Maybe people are buying Japanese maples. Maybe, you know, I, there's so many different plants and trees out there that you could get into. These are native. Find something native in your area. In fact, there's a massive nursery that's probably, I think it's like 45 minutes away from me and they sell nothing but native species plants. I actually met the guy who helped start and own it. It was a partnership if I remember right. It's been a few years since I met him but he started this business and is generating millions of dollars in revenue now and he does nothing but sell native species. He doesn't get into anything fancy. He doesn't get into patented plants. He sells nothing but native species plants to our area. Another business idea you consider going into. And then you don't have to think about patented plants. You don't have to think about, you know, anything special. If you're somebody who appreciates native plants and not wanting to bring in all kinds of different things to the area. I mean, there you go, guys. I mean, I just, these ideas just pop off my head like crazy as I'm talking because I like to talk and the ideas flow the more you talk. So maybe you should start talking more. All right, so I know that was a little long-winded, but I'm trying to bring all of this down into a package that is manageable for you. Something that you can... I'm a very visual person and a hands-on person. I need to see it in my mind. I need to see it in front of me. I need to be able to touch and feel it. And so maybe you guys are like that too. I'm trying to show you what this whole picture can look like and how easy it really can be. The other thing I want to say is this does not have to be on a large scale. And I'm not telling you to run out and start this big business and, you know, buy into all kinds of licenses and, you know, don't go spend a ton of money on anything. A big part of the purpose of these videos is to show you that you can actually prove a concept to yourself and then slowly and gradually build something if you want to. So I've had this idea for a while. I don't know if my wife's going to let me do it because <laughs> she loves this thing. But just to prove a concept to you guys, I keep staring at this thing, but I've got a peace lily in my living room. It's massive. It's in a big blue pot. It's like, it's probably a foot and a half to two foot, the pot. It's a huge, well, maybe, maybe it's a foot and a half in diameter. It's a big blue pot. It's got growth coming up all around the whole inside of that pot. And those peace lilies are, uh, they're probably a good three foot high, the leaves hanging over, and it just blooms all winter long in the lowest light in the living room. Right? We have almost no light coming through that window and with an awning on the outside. 
blocks the sun and everything and that thing just grows like crazy and blooms profusely and i've i've had an idea where what if i just took this one house plant we're, we're talking about one house plant guys what if i just took this one house plant and hacked it all back divided it all up put them in individual pots and just put an ad up on craigslist or facebook or something like that and just saw if i could sell these and show you guys that it really can be that simple. And what if you could make 50 or or $100 or more with that one house plant? And that's where I get excited talking about this stuff. Not in some big commercial greenhouse. You can do that. And I know a few people who do run businesses, run greenhouse businesses. One of them make, makes millions of dollars a year. He's got a huge operation and supplies all of the Costco's in our area with perennial plants. That's not where you start. <laughs> and so I think it's every bit as exciting, if not more, to just do something like I'm talking about. Take a house plant, one house plant you've had for years, and just turn it in and keep a start from it to keep going and turn it into a hundred bucks or 200 bucks and, and go, wow, man. That's really cool. I really can do this. And then you go, well, you know, somebody will come on here and say, that's only a hundred dollars. That's only $200. That won't do me any good. It's a start. And then you take that idea. And what if your living room is full of these two foot diameter pots growing peace lilies. And now you're making $2,000 every time you make the rounds and you've got a living room full of beautiful peace lilies that are blooming all winter and require no sunlight. I just, I don't know. I mean, yeah, there's little, there's logistics. There's, you got to, you know, and somebody else will come on here and say, I don't want my whole living room. You know, <laughs> there's always going to be little things you got to figure out, but you just got to decide what plant you love and start. And if you've watched to the end here, then you're going to get something that I think is really cool. I told you in the beginning, I would leave you with something here in the end to ponder over when I, I was actually talking to my buddy Mark Walker of The Overworked Gardener. Go check his channel out. I'll put a link in the description below. But I was talking to him about this this morning. And I don't know why or what, but this, this quote popped into my mind that impacted me years ago when I heard it. And has stuck with me all these years. And I want to leave you with this quote so that you can kind of go through your day and go, Wow, that's interesting. And really start getting your gears turning and making you move in the direction I know you already want to move. And here it is. Never give up on a dream just because of the time it will take to accomplish it. The time will pass anyway. Earl Nightingale said that. I just, when I first read that, it impacted me a lot. And I thought, you know, the time is going to pass anyway. Someday I'm going to be 70. Will I be glad that I didn't give up on my dream? Even though at times it seems mundane. At times I have to do the little stuff I don't want to do. Or will I look back and say, I'm glad I gave that up and floundered around and jumped back and forth all over the place and never really accomplished any one goal. I'm going to say it again. Never give up on a dream just because of the time it will take to accomplish it. And you can plug in there the money it will take, the the land it will take, the pots it will take, the bark it will take, the energy it will take. Never give up on a dream just because of the time it will take to accomplish it. The time will pass anyway. There you go, guys. I hope you enjoyed this one. I hope you learned something from it. I hope that you're inspired. I hope you have a fantastic weekend, and I'll see you in the next video. Adios.